It's Saturday morning. It's uh, it's nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, yeah. And go figure. Bo blowing me up. He ain't got a dollar in his pocket. Blowing me up, y'all. And I know y'all, everybody feels sorry for him and all of that, but I don't feel sorry for him. I used to. I don't feel sorry for him no more, y'all. Mm-mm. He puts himself in these terrible situations. Like right now, his back's on the wall. He's got to work. He needs to work. He ain't got a dollar. So he done put himself, after the conversation you guys saw me have yesterday with him before he got out of the truck, and then he gonna act like he gonna. Then he gonna act like he mad at me, cause he ain't got no money. See, that shit don't work with me. I don't give a damn. So no matter what if we do today, he ain't gonna get a lot of money out of me. No matter what. Uh, and if he gets anything more than, uh, and I'm not rushing to work or nothing. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm going to get me a biscuit. I'm gonna go visit my mom and them. And you know, I ain't studying. I'm finna eat. And, you know, you know, live my life, you know, and if, uh, if I see that we can, uh, I see that the business can come up on some money today, and there are some things that I can do, uh, it's just, do I want to, do I, do I really want to generate money for him, you see what I'm saying, I don't, man, I don't, you know, and Bo don't know how to do anything, you know, like, I need to wash this truck. Well, Bo, about the last time Bo washed, it, washed one of my vehicles, I mean, it, it was terrible, dude. Shit everywhere. I mean, he missed this spot, missed that spot, and, you know. But to hear Bo tell it, he's he, he's an he's a automobile detailer. Come on, man. Yeah. So, a couple things I want to talk about this morning. Uh, number one... I want to thank all you guys for watching me and gals that watch me and watch my channel. I'm uh, uh, very appreciative of all the support. Trying to get to a thousand, you know. Uh, not that anything's really going to change once I get to a thousand, you know. It just seems like it's taking a lot longer than what I thought, you know. Uh, it's quite a feat, man, to get to a thousand subscribers, man, uh, you know. But I don't really, you know, uh, do videos and. Uh, and everything in in the in the in the way that I'm, you know, always asking for more subscribers, man. You know, I don't say hit the like button and and, and all that. You know, and don't forget to subscribe and all that. I don't say all those things because I figure if somebody really wants to subscribe, they will, right? You know. Uh, but yeah, I'm grateful and 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 very appreciative of all of all the uh, views and everything. So. Uh, I'm just keeping it real, y'all, you know. Uh, so I was watching a video this morning uh, of uh, one of the guys, uh, you know, one of the other landscapers, uh, and they were talking about, you know, uh, money and how much money you want to make versus how much you need, you know. Uh, and I was going to elaborate a little bit on that, uh, you know. There are a few things that you can do in the beginning of your business to really sabotage yourself, okay? I'm, I'm going to name you three or four of them that will really, as far as my knowledge, as far as I know, this is just based on what I think. It's not law, fact, or anything. It's just based on my personal experience that got me to where I'm, you know, that, that I've learned the things that I've went through to get me to this point at uh, 14 years in, okay? I just got done with my 14th season, okay? So, uh, and my business has grown a third every year. Number one thing that you got to do in the very beginning, well, you got to get up and, and, and get your hustle on, whatever that may be, you know? You, you, you can't, you ain't gonna get no money you ain't gonna get no uh, business by yourself uh, or anything as long as you own mama's couch. You know, 
So that's the number one thing. If you ain't got that, then you're never going to be able to compete with somebody like me. Because uh, when I first got involved and when I first got into this game, you know, I was so afraid of, you know, once I got laid off my job, I was so afraid I'd have so much idle time that I would get stuck at home playing video games and stuff. I sold my damn video game console. I don't even have one anymore. Now, because I didn't know if I had the self-discipline it takes to, to uh, you know, to, 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 to grow my own business. So, there's a deer right there. So, you know, you, 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 you know, when you're young in the game, you know, you got to have some self-discipline, man. You got to be able to tell yourself, hey, I need to get off this couch. Now, don't get me wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with playing video games, y'all. Don't get me wrong. But I, in the very beginning, I could see myself and I kept thinking to myself, man, I get stuck on that couch, you know, playing video games all day. And I was afraid I was going to get hooked on video games and it was going to suck up a big part of my time, which is going to hamper me from growing or hamper me from earning. So I decided that I would sell the video game console. And I didn't sell it, I traded it for a chainsaw. <laughs> That's what I did, you know. Uh, but, you know, in the, in the beginning, so the first thing that you gotta do is you gotta, is you gotta have the where within to get up, get motivated, no matter what your situation is, you know, and uh, all that. Because if you're not if you're not motivated, you ain't got a chance. Uh, so that'd be the number one thing. Uh, you got to know that this is what you're going to be doing. You know, so you got to motivate yourself. So number one, motivation of yourself. You know, and then number two, you know, the practicality is of uh, you know what are your is your life in a place where you can be patient for money. Uh, where you don't have to, where your expenses are uh, just everyday expenses as far as living. I'm not talking about business expenses, I'm talking about living expenses. Is it at a place where where you can afford it and you gotta know what that number is, but you need minimal to pay your bills. Now, if you just started your business and you jumped out there and bought a damn $40,000 truck and you got, you know, uh, uh, ten, twelve thousand dollar lawnmowers, and you got two customers. Well, you 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 done made a mistake. You done made mistake number one, and it's gonna hurt you for years to come. You know, you have to kind of start from the from zero and work your way up. You know, you have to start. You can't. You know, you shouldn't. I shouldn't. I wouldn't go out and buy. You know, big boy lawnmowers and stuff off the muscle. That's just me. Now, if I had another business, say you're in the, say you're in another service business, say you're in the pressure washing business, you know, and, and you got, and you got a few customers, well, you try to piggyback off of that, but see, the thing about pressure washing, unlike lawn care, is that lawn care, you're going to be, it's repetitive, you're going to be out there every two or three weeks, you know, every week or two, you know, during the summer. So, it makes more sense to build a lawn care business up and then you can branch off to do other things, you know, uh, because you gotta have so many customers really to make it in the lawn care business. You gotta have enough customers to, uh, you know, uh, where you can pay your bills. So yeah, so that's, that, that's one thing that uh, a lot of people don't, ain't thinking about. But in the very beginning, you got to be looking at and th at things uh, uh, broke, and I would never suggest anybody, not anybody, go out. Even if you got the money, man, go out and spend, you know, money on the kind of mowers and stuff that I got. You know, uh, you know where you're spending, you know, fifteen, sixteen, uh, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. You know how many ever thousands of dollars on a mower. You know. I would never do that. Uh, you, sh you shouldn't 
you, you shouldn't do that, you know. So that'd be the number that'd be the number two thing. Don't get giddy, you know, and now you're ready to be, you know, something that you're not yet. You know, don't get too high on, you know, getting new customers. Be happy for yourself and be proud of yourself and all that because it takes work. Uh, but you can't let that affect the way you spend. You know, uh, a big part of this game is how you manage your money, you know, uh, in lieu of equipment and everything. Go in debt without some sort of justification in the very beginning, meaning, okay, uh, I just picked up this apartment complex, you know, I'm new in the game. My cousin was working for this landscaper and this landscaper, uh, don't want to do these, this trailer park anymore. And, uh, and I, and I want to get in the game. And, and so, you know, they're going to let the, the, the this guy's going to give me all these, you know, these, this trailer park or, or whatever. Robin 110 oh, crossing way. Cheers y'all. So the, the, the number two thing is I wouldn't go out and buy a bunch of brand new equipment without any justification for that. You know, even if I had money, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't because these mowers, they lose, they, they, they lose value. Uh, you know, as, as, you know, they lose value as soon as you ride off with one of them, you know, uh, for you know, I know that for a fact because you know y'all know about the skag and you people that follow me. So, uh, you know, you don't want to. And and another thing too, you know, in that same area, is you want to make sure that you know what kind of equipment to buy. What I see a lot of people doing is they jump out there and they uh, they buy a new piece of equipment when they're really not even sure of exactly what kind of properties they're going to be doing because they've got four or five yards. And that really does not define your business because those four or five yards uh, is not enough to make your make a living. You know, so if you go and spend, you know, $10,000, $12,000 on a mower and, and equipment, trailer and everything, you know, uh, and, you're, and you're in fifteen or $16,000 and you got uh five yards in one neighborhood well you know uh you got to have more work than that and then you may find that the next 20 yards you get ain't nothing like the five you're doing in that neighborhood that's just my thinking and another thing that i when it comes on equipment and equipment purchases and, and all is uh me personally for the yard, you know, being, you know, uh, 13, 14 years in, I know that I would never buy, I don't, I don't never like to say never, but I know that I would never buy for my daily use. Uh, well, I don't see, yeah, <clears throat> now that I think about it, I, I, I would never buy a, like a 36 inch stand on mower. That's just me, y'all. Uh, they cost way too much for the amount of grass that you can cut with them. Now, if you're 12 years in though, and you know that that that, that you made it these 12 years or 10 years or you know at least six or seven years, and, and you know that those are the type of properties you like doing, the little bitty tiny properties, uh, you know, then uh, you know by all means, you know, do what you need to do, you know, to, to be more efficient, you know, but uh. uh a 36 inch stand on mower is just way too small for me. Uh, way too small for anything that, that I do. Because see, you, you limit your, you tie your hands when you, when you're, when you, when you get a mower that small, you can't do, you know, uh, acre properties, you know, uh, you, and the thing about it is that 36 inch stand on mower, it's gonna cost you pretty close to what a 48 or a 52 would cost you. I don't know the exact numbers, but if I'm gonna, if I'm starting a business, I'm not buying a 32, I mean a 36 inch stand on mower. I'm just not. It's not worth the money. You can't cover enough square footage to make good money. You would have to do, you would have to have and do 
uh, you know, a hundred and you know, you'd have to have a hundred customers or so. And, you know, you just can't, you just can't cover enough distance with, you know, enough volume in one day with, with a 36 inch mower, especially if that's your only mower. So, uh, if I'm investing and I'm, and I'm starting out, uh, I think I would go with a, nothing smaller than a, than a, a, a 48 on, on a stand on or a Z turn mower, you know, uh, and if I had some properties where the 48 wouldn't fit in there in the back gate or whatever, then that's where I would buy like one of these little homeowner, uh, you know, one of these little homeowner mowers, little 21 inch push mower, you know, uh, and because they don't cost that much and you get a pretty good bang for your buck it's really more about how much time you have to spend on the yard because if you got a 21 inch well you know versus a 36 inch stand on well you might be more efficient on that one forty dollar property but what are you going to do when you run up on a you know an acre and a half mm -mm. you're going to be in trouble you're going to be able to do it but you're going to have to you're not going to be able to do it efficiently enough to to really earn you know so don't get caught up in the first four or five or you know customers that you got and thinking that you done made it because you haven't made it i'm just a realist y'all i'm a real talk here you haven't made it yeah you'll know when you when, when you've actually made it to where you can make a living there's a huge difference in <clears throat> in doing this on the side when you got a full-time job and a check coming in to doing this full-time you know uh so don't jump out there with no 36 inch stand on mower man mm -mm. Uh, uh i wouldn't start out with and now if, if somebody gave me one well different you know if if father-in-law or brother-in-law gave me a damn 36 inch mower well then hell I, and i ain't got nothing in the 36 inch mower stand on mower then i'm i'm uh, i'm and i'm gold you know, I use that that to make you know more money, but I feel like if you're going to invest six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars into a stand on mower, you got to you, you got to get up a little bit bigger than a than a thirty six. You know, to to you got to be able to to uh, broaden your your cut. You can't just think about them first four customers you got in that one neighborhood in that cul de sac down there, because. You might you might get a call tomorrow where you got somebody with two acres, and then what you gonna do then? You lose money if you rent mowers. Let's get that straight. Renting a lawnmower is not a great business move. It's just not. You know I know it, it, I've never done it. You know, but uh, to rent a lawnmower, with I mean I would have to really be in dyers to rent a lawnmower. I would really have to have uh, a whole lot of work to do uh, because down here where I'm at, they charge you about $170 a day to rent a Z-turn, a 60 inch Z-turn mower. Well, yeah, that's backwards if you ask me. I'm just saying y'all, just saying, that's backwards because uh, it's just not good business to me. You know, now if you're gonna rent a, a mini X or a skid steer, well, that makes more sense because the volume, the volume of work, you know, the well, not the volume of work, the magnitude of what you can do with a bobcat, you can overcome, you know, four or five hundred dollar a day rental fee because the work that you're doing is so lucrative. With a with a lawnmower, it's not. I just would never never rent a lawnmower, y'all. I'm just saying. So don't put yourself in a spot where you uh, wh where you can't do big square footage or bigger square footage in these little cookie cutter neighborhoods. Because keep in mind that that you're gonna have to have, you know. And and, and it varies some, so y'all don't take this as hardcore. Uh, but to make a living. You know, uh, you're probably going to need uh, 35 or 40 yards to make a living. Now, there is skewed a little bit because some yards are bigger than others. But if you're, I'm talking about the kind of yards that you would have to have to do 
for with a 36 inch little stand on mower you know i had rather buy a used commercial mower 48 or 52 now i, I got all 60s but if i'm starting i'm talking about if i'm starting out i had rather buy a used 48 or 52 inch mower than a brand new 36 inch stand on mower that's just me because your time is everything your time is what you sell out here and the smaller mower you get the less money you're gonna make per hour or per you know i mean yeah per hour and no i don't look at things per hour you have to kind of keep that in the back of your head when you're when you're doing properties you know and customers that's got you know a 2,000 square foot tiny yard that you would be applying a 36 inch stand on mower on well they don't want to pay good money they i mean you know they don't they, they don't you know they don't want to pay you know raise type money that i that that i want they want to what that they want to say well it's only 2,000 square foot man so you know i think 35 dollars is is plenty it only takes you you know uh, 35 minutes see and i don't i don't i don't bite on that because it's more work to do the 2,000 square foot yards than it is to do the acre yards it's more work it's harder work because the machines uh uh on the bigger cuts usually there's space you know, uh, you get on these little bitty neighborhoods, and y'all have heard me talk about this before. I don't like the neighborhoods. Uh, I do have some in neighborhoods because, well, you know, I have to do what I have to do. But uh, I don't have any jobs that strictly push mow. I got about three that the backyard, we have to push the backyard. And I charge accordingly, you know. Uh, I don't do any properties uh, for less than fifty dollars. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I think I got. I take that back, y'all. I take it back. I got three that are forty dollar properties, but they can't cry about nothing. And in the beginning, I had a slew of thirty five and forty degree, uh, 40, thirty five and forty dollar properties a slew of them you know when i first started that's all i was chasing because that's all i could do and make money at i couldn't do the great big cuts because i didn't have the proper equipment yet but i realized very fast first year or two that i need bigger mowers bigger mowers bigger mowers bigger mowers that i didn't want to have to walk behind a freaking mower and i didn't want to have to uh be on a cut for an hour and a half to make 50 bucks and that's the kind of thing you run into when you stick with that little bitty mower so Equipment purchase, the initial equipment purchase uh, is going to define how much money you can make to begin with. Because you don't really know what kind of equipment to buy yet. Because you don't really know what your clientele is yet. So, to me, I stay away from them 36 inch mowers, man, because it's a whole lot more work. <clears throat> and you hear guys on YouTube all the time say, well, this is a young man's game. Well, it is a young man's game as far as the labor goes, but it ain't a young man's game as far as the knowledge goes. Because uh, uh, if you have the right customers and the right equipment, you really don't have to work that hard. You know, of course, if you're solo and 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 you're doing yards for thirty-five dollars and 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 you know and you're working over there for an hour for thirty-five bucks or forty bucks, well, of course. It's a struggle, and it's hard-ass work. But you can't afford to hire no help to help you do anything. And I don't care what anybody on YouTube says about labor and all the things that go along with labor. You cannot, you can make more money when you got guys on, when you got labor. If you don't have any help, you are going to be hung up doing work, busting your ass, and you're never going to be able to get past that. True enough, you could probably make a living 
by yourself. I don't see why you couldn't. I did for years. But I recognized real quick that I didn't want to, that, that, that I was getting, you know, I was in my mid forties and I didn't want to, you know, uh, or uh, I was in my late thirties and I didn't want to, uh, labor like that if I didn't have to, you know? And when I, and so then I started figuring out, okay, pricing. Okay. I, uh, uh, if I was going to price this one for $40 by myself, then I'm at $50 with a man helping me. And then I'm just keeping the same money, but I'm doing the property fast, man, you know, and we're doing a better job. We're doing a better job when I got somebody on staff out there with me because you got, you know, you got four hands instead of two. And uh, I always get the guys to do the things that I don't want to do. That's just the perk of being the business owner. And that's the perk of taking a chance on, on if you're going to make money or not, you know, uh, and it's a it's a young man's game as far as the labor goes, but it really, you know, uh, uh, and there are exceptions. Don't get me wrong, y'all. There are exceptions to what I'm fixing to say. I have found that people that are spending big money, and I'm not talking about thirty-five dollar properties. People that are spending bigger money, where they're doing. Uh, you know, the beds and they're doing the sod installs and they're doing rocks and they're doing tree trimming and all these things. The homeowner don't want a young buck out there doing all that because that young buck, well, <clears throat> I ain't saying they don't want a young buck doing it. They want, they want, they want their contact guy to be somebody a little bit older with a little bit more life experience because they figure, and it ain't always true, they figure the more life experience you got, then the the more responsible and the more, uh, you know, uh, knowledgeable you're going to be about whatever projects they got going on. Put it this way, in a nutshell, and this thing, and, and like I said, this doesn't apply, but it, 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 it's, it's rule of thumb if you ask me. Customers tend to listen to somebody older than somebody younger. I'm just saying, you know, uh, if you're if you're 45 years old and you've been doing this for a while, that customer gonna listen to you a lot more than he's gonna listen to a 21 year old that's been doing it for a few years too, because because you're just older and you know uh and and they figure you got more life experience you know whether that's true or not who knows i don't know but so if you're young in the game and you're having a hard time getting really lucrative work that's why because they don't really trust your judgment as much as they would somebody that's 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 older than you when i'm talking about older than you if you're 22 or 23 Versus somebody that's 40 years old that's been doing this shit for 14 years, you know, and it, that's not always true. There are some young men out there that got it together, y'all. Hey, hey, I wish I'd had it together like that, but I'm just talking about the average customer of mine, you know. And even in the beginning, and I was, you know, I was still uh, 30, you know, 37 or so. Uh, they still, I, they still didn't listen to me on everything like they do now. Now they know me, so and 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 then they start listening to me, and and, and then then I'm able to sell them more work. See, you know, uh, for instance, I'm not gonna hire, and even though he might be qualified, I'm not gonna hire a, a 22 year old or even a 24, 25 year old. Uh, to do a sod install where you're renting equipment, uh, you got a bobcat on site, uh, and all the moving parts of a of a sod job. I'm not. I, I'm. I, I. Me personally, as a homeowner, I'm not gonna. I'm probably not gonna hire no young man to do that job unless I know he's backed by his daddy or somebody. See. You know, that's the way it is for me personally, being a homeowner. Uh, and that 
sounds a little bit prejudiced against young men, but it's really not. It's just being truthful with you about what uh, customers see, you know, and uh, uh, and we all have to go through that in order to get to the other side to where uh, when you say something to a customer, they believe you wholeheartedly and they don't mind opening up their checkbook. You know, uh, yeah. So I know I'm kind of going on a little rant here. Uh, you know, uh, probably repeating myself a hundred times, but yeah. So that would be the, the second thing is about equipment and what you and, and and what you need to purchase. You need to go cheap to begin with, so you can just figure out what ideal piece of equipment you need. Because a lot of times people buy equipment and. Well, they buy they buy equipment that, that is not right for the for the jobs that they're going to be doing, even though it'll get them by. It's it, 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 it's not it's not ideal, and it's not the most efficient way to do the properties. And the reason why it's not is because you don't know what you're going to be doing, you know. So yeah, and if you if, if you if it's all laid out in front of you where there's a master plan there, you got your cousin or brother or daddy or somebody's already in the game, well, then none of that really applies to you because you got people whispering in your ear and you've been around it all your life, so you kind of know what's, what's happening, see? So, you know, and you can and you can go to, you can ask dad, uh, you know, that's been in the business for a long time, you know, how to do this and what to do here and blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, I'll continue this on later, y'all. I, I got to go ahead and get me something to eat, man. My stomach is touching my back, man. Later. What's up? What's up, man? Oh, you, did you got that coat sh shaking up? Uh-uh. I ain't sure what I'm going to do today, dude. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Nobody's returning the calls. Oh. <sighs> What'd you do last night? Nothing went around eating. You ate your checkup? Yep. I would have liked to went and got everything, you know. Got her, got Why didn't you? I asked Glenn if she'd give me a ride. She said no. Well, you got a bike though, dude. Why don't you ride I asked her to hold money and she said no. I mean, I know it's on me, so that's what I need to learn to do. That's what I'll do. Well, yeah, but see, you dragging the business in the process, man. Huh? Because it, because you, 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 you need work. And you, and you want me to generate work like it's an ATM, man. Oh, we always work on Saturday. We've well, always... no, but not this time of year. Hmm. You know? I only work on Saturday when you know when I when I when I want to, man. I don't have any work. That's the problem. I don't know the way I look around everybody else, man. I'm having a hard time. Well, yeah, you have a lot of well, dirt. Anybody that takes their check and you know spends a hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars a day, man, you ain't never gonna have nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And then you make it where it's just definitely hard to work you because you won't keep a phone. I didn't ask nobody for shit yesterday. I took my own money and spent it. I know. Well, just that's the same thing you do every day. So, I mean, what's changed, dude? Ain't nothing really changed. Mm -hmm. You took your money and you blew it. And you smell like a brewery. Yeah. So you you put pressure you pressure you put pressure on me, man, to generate work, man. I ain't got to, you know. How come you can't work for Glenda today? She's, uh, well, her son's bringing her a power blower, a little blower, and her grandkids are coming over today. So basically, I'm just kind of waiting for things to dry. Dry? Yeah that, yeah, that little bit of wood I got. You know, you can't burn the leaves when they're wet. I don't know if she wants to burn them when her grandkids come over. She said tomorrow we're going to burn all those leaves. So that's good. My little bit of wood can dry out. But. My mower's sitting right there. 
How come you ain't? How come she you said, ain't? She said, cause she said, cause I, cause she said she gonna have it repaired, have it uh, tuned up, or I'd be working with it, trying to get it going. Well, when is she gonna do that? I don't know. I mean, well, you had enough money yesterday where you could have got it repaired yourself. Cause me, you uh, making money, so you ain't saying you ain't doing anything. Productive. Cause she says she's gonna take it. Yeah. But yeah, but but she's not. You're the one that's sitting here ain't got no money. You know, if you just spent your money on something like that, that makes more sense. I just don't really see what I'm, what we're gonna do today. I really don't have a lot to do. It ain't worth just doing one property. I, I, thought, I thought I was supposed to get $5,000 from my mom. I would have been gone if I would have had a, back then. Yeah, that there. money would be gone too. But it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I don't know why you telling me that. I don't got nothing to do with that. You had thirty. You had three grand. You that's enough. Do. That's enough to them fuck hey, up and don't. fuck up some more and, and then, fuck up and a little then, bit more. Because you know how I am. So yeah, when I fall, you fuck it all up. Hell, I'm wanting to leave and go to rehab one time. If there's money sitting in the bank or something yeah. chunk I put back, god dang, it's gonna get used right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get used right. It's gonna get used until the only way you're gonna go to rehab. It doesn't matter. I can do what I want to. Yeah, it. but the only way you're gonna go to rehab is if you ain't got no money. You ain't going to rehab with a pocket full of money. It doesn't matter, I can do what I want. You know what I'm saying? If somebody gives me something, that's for me. Right, but ain't nobody giving you nothing. Oh, I thought they did. Well, they, but they didn't. Oh. And if they had, it'd be gone now anyway, so it don't really matter. It works drying up, dude. It's that time of the year. You knew that, though, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, you know, it happens every year. Ain't nobody calling me back, dude, so I don't know what to say. I don't really see, I don't really see what we're gonna do, dude. You know? I figured somebody would call me back. Nobody's texting me back or nothing. Yeah, I'll see you for a few more minutes. Nobody calls me back, dude. I'll drop you, drop you off somewhere, dude, because there ain't, there ain't no work, man. I can't, make people call me. You know what I mean? Mm. Don't be upset with me. It ain't my fault, dude. I'm not upset. Well, it sounds like you're a little bit Debbie Downerville saying I was saying got no work for you. No, I'm fine I'm sitting here. I mean, you done called my phone about four times this morning. You never do that. You must be broke. You must owe people. It's really not even just the money. I just want. I just. I'm antsy. I want to do something. Okay, well, uh, you know? there's plenty. Of, I mean. I'm gonna work. Okay, I'm but gonna I don't have again. no money though. I don't have no work for us, dude. So I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I can't manufacture no work, man. You know? I'm not gonna spend 30 to get 40. You know? So, you gotta learn to be better with your money, dude. I mean, you're gonna be walking the streets of Sonoma without any money. You know, and you knew that, you know, I mean, you, you, you know, you just don't make no sense. So you didn't take care of anything, really, with all your money. Just not, not where you need to be, dude. You know? Yeah, I guess so. I just, want, just didn't know if you had any work you wanted to do. Yeah, I don't, I'm trying to do <clears throat> everything I can. Jim, Randy, ain't nobody ever gave a damn. They just give you the money and that's it. Yeah, well, you don't give it. a damn, Bo. You got your check yesterday and you blew it all. But ain't nobody else, ain't nobody else ever said anything. Because there ain't nobody else having a damn uh, generate work for you. Oh. Yeah. You you you, you calling me on Saturday, you know, trying to get uh, trying to get work because you ain't got no money. If you had a pocket full of money, you wouldn't have called me. Hmm. See. No, I'm. I uh I always want to work. Well, you you had a, you had a no call no show last week, Bo, just a few days ago. Oh. So. I don't know about what world you're living in, dude. I'm just trying to damn. Right you're looking at it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Pretty it's a lot more it's beautiful. Really it's a lot more beautiful when you got some money in your pocket. Everything looks a little brighter when you got some money in your pocket. You know. And there's no excuse for you not having any money in your pocket. Not none. It ain't like you have big boy bills or nothing. You ain't pay nobody. You ain't, you ain't, 
Do nothing but just smoke your money up. Gone. Yeah, you think you get tired of that shit, you know? What'd you think that we was gonna be working? That you was gonna get a full day's pay today? I didn't know what you had today. We just, I just know that we always just. I didn't know it slowed down and we didn't work on Saturdays anymore. Obviously. Well, I only work on Saturdays. You know, I told, but you got to go off what I told you yesterday. Like a lot got, of times you're doing firewood this time of year. Yeah, so. I'm not doing firewood. You don't see, I don't have any wood. Yeah. Nobody's buying wood. I mean, who buys wood in, you know, 75 degrees weather? That's going to leave me. Ain't that's nothing right. I can do about it. Ain't nothing really going on, man. And that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I ain't, I ain't, I'm, I'm good with that. It's like I told you yesterday, you know, when you got out of the trunk, dude, I mean, don't spend all your money. Don't call me broke in the morning. You, and you said, okay. And there you go. Call me broke. And you got a whole nother week to get any more money, dude. That's crazy, dude. I ain't gonna be working every day this week coming up. There ain't, there ain't no work. You know, Drew ain't gonna. You see, Drew ain't been working every day. Nobody's been working every day. So there's nothing to do. One yard. But I'm not gonna go home and get the trailer, come back down here and do that yard and all that. I'm not gonna do that today. I have to wait. I gotta have more than one, man. It ain't even worth the, the energy and the gas. It's gotta be. Ain't nobody calling me back, dude, so um, where, you, where you want me to drop you off at? Back up at Glenda's? Yeah. I mean, nothing I can do about it, dude. Doing all I can, man. If somebody, if, if, if people, if three or four people call me, then I, I don't know, I can't get in touch with you, so. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know how to handle all that. Yeah, I thought you had that one over in your mom. I do, yeah. but I'm not going to, like I said, man, yeah. I'm not going to spend 40 to make 50. Yeah. It's too much trouble for one yard. I won't do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. If if I get more work, if, I, if that's the only one I got, then that ain't going to happen tomorrow either. It's a lot of trouble, man. It costs, it costs money, man, to, to go do a property, man. If I'm not making nothing, I don't want to do it. I gotta be making money, man. To justify the gas in the truck and mowers and shit. I'm mad at the world. I don't give a damn. I ain't gonna work him. I knew I, I I knew I probably wasn't gonna work him before I ever even uh, I got you guys a little bit of video, but I knew I probably wasn't gonna work him, man. Get in the truck all Debbie Downer and ain't got one dollar in his pocket, y'all. Not one freaking dollar. Stupid man. I think he gone. Yeah, you know. Y'all know. Yeah, it's warming up pretty good, man. See, I'd just rather just. I can do things around my house, man. Uh, we really have to have a knucklehead out here. So that's how I go on a Saturday morning, y'all, with uh, you know, with Bo and all his all his uh, loser loser shit, you know. He had he had a uh, hundred and fifty bucks, and he blew every dollar of it, y'all, and didn't get nothing. So yeah, let's give him some more money, y'all. Y'all y'all uh create a fund me page and let's give Bo some more money. I think money will help Bo. I'm sure I'm sure money will help Bo. Hell to the no. So that's one that we can do. We'll do that one next week. See, I got and see, <clears throat> you gotta be thinking too in terms of okay. If the work is not pressing, right, and the people are not calling me, you know, hey Ray, I need to get over here, man, you know, blah blah blah. And the work's not pressing, then I need to save as as the work dries up a little bit, I need to save some of the work for Drew, see? And that, uh, that's what Bo don't understand. Because up to Bo, he'd suck up all the work and get, and and and, uh, not, and, and don't give a damn 
you know, if Drew gets any of us, he Drew got bills to pay. Bo ain't paying nothing. So I like to, so as the work, you know, during the summer, work is so plentiful, it don't really matter. But this time of year, you got to be kind of sassy about how you damn uh, get a workout difference. You want to keep, you know, I want to be able to keep Drew on the payroll. And uh, so I got to be able to justify that. So, all right, I'm going to pull up here to the car wash and uh, run, the, run the truck through this damn washer, man. Ray, peace out.